Don't you think your uh, barrel length there is a little too long for home defense? Well, I think my barrel length is pretty average, but I mean, if you want to compare them, then we can. Well, I think what you need to know is less is more when it comes to home defense. What's going on everybody? Clint here. Alec here. And we're with Classic Firearms and today we're bringing you a video all about home defense barrel length. Barrel length. Ba barrel length. Specifically. Specifically. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start it off with some rifle calibers because a lot of you guys have been uh, sliding up into my DMs asking <laughs> about barrel length and wanting to know exactly, hey, there's not a lot on the market right now. Yeah. And I've got the option between like a 13.7, which mm -hmm. where did that come from? Yeah. And also like 10.3, and of course your standard average length yep. of 16 inches. And so let's go ahead and kick this off real quick. For home defense, going with this, I think is just not I mean if it's all you got, then sure, absolutely, right? But yeah, personally. I would agree. It's too, no, it's too long. Yeah, it's too it's much. Too long. I would agree. Do you want to hop into why that might be? So, I mean, realistically, a 16 inch barrel length, and this kind of comes down to, again, like, you know, if you're going to have like one do all rifle, which I might be skipping ahead here, sorry. I think 13.7 is kind of the overall length for that. But a 16 inch barrel, obviously, good for mid to longer range engagements. But for yeah. clearing a house, like, obviously, like this guy is pretty long here, even with the stock all the way collapsed. I mean, yeah. if you're trying to come around, like, you know, rooms in your house or stuff yeah. like that, you have a grand majority of your barrel sticking yeah. out before you even clear the wall. Sure. So, um, you know, some things to think about there, um, you know, it's tight quarters yeah. in your house, you know what I mean? So a smaller barrel length, you know, not only you're more maneuverable, but again, if you are in a situation, you know, and you're coming around that corner, you don't want someone to grab your barrel yeah, or true. You know, be bumping into stuff or whatever. Yeah, and I agree with that. So what my take is on it when it comes to barrel length, longer barrels for home defense, things like that, is also too with the 5.56 cartridge, you're gonna be gaining a lot of velocity from a 10 inch to a yeah. 16 inch. Mm -hmm. And with velocity, you know, speed, hit knockdown power, or whatever you wanna call that, however that's scientifically measured. Yeah. And you have to think about over penetration. Yeah, it's Again, definitely a thing. Where you live matters, obviously, because if you're in an apartment complex running around with a 16 inch yeah, AR, probably not, it. probably not it. Probably not it, Cotton. Yeah, so. <laughs> uh, hey, hollow points, nine mil in your bedside gun, you're probably even better off with, right? We'll talk a little bit more about that here in just a moment. But uh, that's why I like to run personally um, a little bit smaller barrel. But for me though, um, my, I keep going back and forth on this idea mm -hmm. about running silencers for home defense. Yeah. So if you are involved in a uh, home defense situation, mm -hmm. Now you have NFA items in the mix, right? Yes. So it gets even more weird, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, with that being said, like for instance, this battle arms development is a pistol, not an NFA item, but like my, as we all know, my ride or die, my Mark 18 here is an SBR with the silencer. Yeah, two stamp gun. Two stamps, so I got two NFA items, and if I were to use this in a uh, questionable situation, well not questionable situation, if it was in a home defense situation, yeah. then I'm fine, but that's just more of this stuff that's locked up, yeah. and for a time that I don't know when until it's de declared Long clean. time. So it's just like, oh man, so it's weird you have to kind of think about that kind of stuff, yeah. but at the same time, hey, I still have my life. Yeah, and which you I was know? getting ready to say, you know, it, I, I definitely see where you're coming from, but yeah. I think suppressors for home defense really make sense. You know, yeah. not only like for yourself, because like, I mean, if you, even with an A2, man, like if yeah. you pop this bad boy off in a hallway, even in a yeah. 10 and a half inch barrel, your ears are just going to be going, ah! <laughs> you know what I mean? So like one shot and you're done, dude. You yeah. know what I mean? So with a suppressor, like, so it's I, still going to be loud. Yeah, it's still going to be loud, but I also too understand in, in heightened stress, things like that, adrenaline kicks in, you're going to have start having things like auditory exclusion take place. But mm -hmm. I mean, we can watch, you know, John Lovell talk about it, things like that all yeah. we want. And great guy, by the way, follow Warrior Pro Society, they're good guys. But uh, anyway, but something like this here, I like the idea of running a silencer because it is just that much quieter to where I can maybe be coherent about what's going on around mm -hmm. Right, because like you said, you take that one shot, bang, it's loud. Your yeah. eardrums well, might be shot. Your family too. You got to think about your family. Yeah, true. Not and the bad guys in the house, obviously, but yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, your wife. You don't want your wife to be like, huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> for the next couple of weeks, <laughs> sure. But also too, you know, at the same time, if you are having a hard time hearing at that point, and you don't know if somebody's still downstairs or not mm -hmm. rummaging around, I don't know. It gets weird. But I mean, I love this type of setup here, especially with something with, um, I think, a little bit lighter load like XM193 or 
or what mm -hmm. would be best, hollow point or frangible, because yeah. then if you do make, make, you know, you don't make your mark on your target, mm -hmm. you do most likely make penetration with the wall or contact yeah. with the wall, it'll disintegrate a little bit quicker mm -hmm. to get, you know, tumble, it'll be thrown off course, yeah. and hopefully not penetrate anywhere else it shouldn't, mm -hmm. right? But things you do have to, to consider. Now with that being said, there's other guns out there like, oh yeah, right here in front of me on the table, <laughs> like 300 Blackout. Yeah. 300 Blackout, you know, we've talked about 5.56, high speed round and everything else, but like on the Sig Rattler here, you know, 300 Blackout I think is a great option because it's a little bit slower, mm -hmm. a little bit thicker, it's getting a full burn at a much slower, mm -hmm. uh, or excuse me, a much uh, less smaller, barrel length. smaller yeah. barrel length, so I feel like it's great. And also too, throw a can on that bad boy. Throw a can on that bad boy, the Yankee Hill machine here. It's a nice quiet little setup. Oh yeah. So. I, I like that. Yeah, and I mean, it, you know, like you mentioned with the 223556, um, and another thing about, another thing to think about too, with smaller, smaller barrel lengths, like, you know, the 223556 cartridge was optimized for a 20 inch barrel. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, enter the people in the chat, they're gonna say, like, well, I wouldn't wanna get shot with anything. Well, yeah, well obviously not. Obviously, yeah. But, I mean, you know, even a seven and a half inch barrel up to a 10 and a half, I mean, realistically, you're not getting good terminal ballistics yeah. from that cartridge. Now, there are specific rounds, like, I think uh, Hornady has one in the Critical Defense in 223, it's like a, I think it's a 75 grain, mm -hmm. um, that, you know, will penetrate up to 12 inches. But with the 300 Blackout, you don't necessarily have to worry about that because you get a lot of, you know, comparing a 55 grain or even a 75 grain bullet to a 220 grain bullet. I mean, you're right. literally twice the weight, which equals more terminal energy going yeah. into the target. Yeah. And it's a lot smaller. Yeah, which is a wider. plus. Yeah, yeah it definitely a plus for, again, that CQB situation, uh, which can bring us to another little short boy. Not as short as this guy here though, but uh, for instance, like uh, Zastava has their new 10 inch AK pistol, yeah. which is, Pretty awesome. We've got mm -hmm. one of them right behind us here. This is the 556 model, also Maxim Defense with their 300 blackout. This isn't like a future giveaway or anything, so there, yeah. there's that. So, I mean, there's different options out there for you guys, which is cool. Uh, but again, we're just kind of talking a little bit about the bear length, a little bit of what we kind of play with personally, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I personally, what is your ideal home defense setup? Like, what do you run even? But I mean, realistically for me, so I mean like I, right now I live in an uptown apartment in yeah. Charlotte, you know what I mean? So it's like a three bed, two bath, it's very small. Um, I mean, realistically, my grab and go gun is a, a pistol. Oh, it's yeah. on my nightstand with the light. A lot of sense. I mean, that's, you know, realistically, I think that's all I need. Now, granted, you know, something to take with a grain of salt, a pistol is only something that allows me to get to a bigger firearm that yeah. I can fight the fight with. But, you know, if you're in a situation where like five people have broken into your house, you're kind of already in a bad spot anyway. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's some realistic things you have to have some conversations with yourselves about. So, I mean, you know, again, me coming out, I hear a bump in the night, the first thing that I grab is my pistol. Now I do have, uh, you know, an AR pistol that's beside my bed that has yeah. a light on it, um, so on and Which, so by the way, for home defense setups, you're always gonna see me running a light. Yeah, Because yeah, most, of, most of the time, the bad stuff's going down, it's at night. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you can't find your flight sw light switch, maybe your internet's cut out and Alexa won't mm -hmm. listen to you. I don't know, uh, whatever, your, whatever your situation is. Yeah. But the thing is, though, if you've got batteries and you're ready to go, you're ready to run, right? Mm -hmm. And yes, for all of you guys looking at this like, oh my God, this thing must weigh a ton. It's not that bad, get over yourself. And yeah, I like my little Mark 18 clones. Yeah. And I do have nods that I like to run with the D-ball here, so. Yeah, no, I mean, it makes perfect sense. I mean, you have to have positive identification. Just a random side story. A buddy of mine, his house actually just got broken into recently. Um, and he got into an altercation with the uh, assailant that came in. It was only one guy. Um, but he is armed. He had a pistol and they got into like a physical altercation. Um, but he did not feel positive pulling the trigger because yeah. he couldn't see the guy. Yeah. So, and you know, I told him, I was like, look, dude, I was like, that's why you got to have lights on your mm -hmm. firearms, man. Because I mean, you could have, I mean, granted, I'm not advocating for just like, you know, blasting off into the dark, which right. is a terrible idea. <laughs> but I mean, you know, if you've got PID, you've got the light. And you know, if he had a weapon of some kind, like, mm -hmm. I mean, realistically, you know, one plus one is two. So that is really interesting though, mm -hmm. because, you know, I, I guess until you're in that situation, it's hard to be able to tell exactly how you're going to respond. Yeah. Right? Like I've, I've seen guys, you know, like literally on the phone with the cops and I'm calling in as I'm watching a guy break into my neighbor's mm -hmm. car. And I'm like, me being a former 911 call taker, police dispatcher, mm -hmm. I already know what the answer to the question was. I was yeah. like, can I go like talk to this guy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, cause dude, I'm like over here just like, yeah, everybody gets in that situation or like, I see a bad guy, I know yeah. I can stop this, but at the same time, you really have to take into consideration these moments because it's like, he might not be working alone. He might have somebody else yeah. just spotting for him mm -hmm. and saying, hey, you got a Kai coming up behind you. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, then what, right? Don't yeah. be a hero. 
if you have the option there, look, just give them the best information, things like that, because it's not it's not worth mm -hmm. not coming home yeah. because you know they took twenty bucks out of your neighbor's car or something, mm -hmm. right? Um, at the same time, if somebody's being assaulted, depending on the crime, that yeah, you know that that'll dictate the whole situation. So, yeah. like a simple break and entering like that with a vehicle, not that big of a deal, honestly. Yeah. I mean, I, I I'm talking to him anyways. I mean, he definitely won the uh, altercation. Well, that's good. But I mean, then again, you know, like he's not like he doesn't come from a military background. Like I, I think he's like a sales agent or something. Yeah. Like I mean, just average Joe. You know what I mean? He's a everyday licensed concealed carry, just a regular two yeah. A Joe. Um, and, but and, I mean, like he had never dealt with a situation yeah. like that before. You know what I mean? But I mean, I feel anyways good on him for not just like blasting off. You know? Yeah. Because there's a lot of people that would just, hey, there's someone in my house, bang, bye. Yeah, right. You and know? and not know the situation. Yeah, which I mean, you know, not to get off on a side tangent, but really puts a bad name for like a lot of you know just yeah. everyday gun owners. Well, and, stuff like and that, so, so this this entire idea too, when it comes to firearm ownership, is actually taking your life into your own hands, right? Yeah. You are personally responsible for your own security as an individual. So that, I mean, you can go out there and not train with your gun, think you're high speed cool with all the tactical swag on it, yeah. but if you never use it, if my stuff's not zeroed, if my light doesn't have batteries in it, if my bore is concentric to my suppressor, <laughs> it doesn't matter exactly. You got a whole separate set of issues. You no, know, I mean, it's <laughs> like, it's like, call oh, dude, look how high speed I am, click, nothing happens, or click, yeah. something does happen, and I forgot that I chambered my 300 blackout mag. <laughs> Yeah, that's <laughs> spicy boy. <laughs> so, uh, with that being said, I want to know what's y'all's favorite barrel length for the application. Me, for my favorite barrel length for home defense is this right here. 10 inches, silence. Mine's 11.5. 11.5? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. And also, too, just a comparison. Stock all the way in. Both of these are B5 stock, so it mm -hmm. should be pretty simple. Full length, 16 inch barrel. Do you mind just holding that up? Yeah. I just kind of want to see exactly what we're looking at here, stock all the way in. So we're almost, mine's still just a tad bit shorter, it looks like. You also have a can on too. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, overall length gotcha. with the can. Okay. So I just kind of want to get a comparison between the two rifles. So yeah. this is equal to about a 16 inch barrel, as it is a 10.3, this is just over six inches. Mm -hmm. So it's it's right, a, right around in that ballpark. So it's like, I mean, get used to your firearm, right? Go out there, train with it, and annoy your spousal unit if you have one, and start clearing your rooms, you yeah, know? You because, hey. Yeah, yeah. Grab her, clear them with her. Yeah, there yeah. you go, that's the way it should be, honestly, right? Uh, and just remember too, guys, you don't want the first time you run into a bad situation be that first time. You wanna be, you pretty much should be able to know how to walk through your house backwards in the dark with your eyes closed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I agree. So there you go. If you got dog toys in the way, RIP. Yeah. So, <laughs> woo! <Whee! laughs> anyway, uh, so you said 11.5 for 11.5 for yeah, me. Yeah, that's awesome. So uh, with that being said, again, I wanna hear from you guys down in the comments section. And also too, before we talk about the giveaway, we're hitting a milestone this week, everybody. In just a few short days, we would have hit, we will be hitting 365 days of consecutive uploads to YouTube with videos 10 minutes in length. For those of you complaining about your videos are too long, this is literally my job. <laughs> this is literally my job yeah. and we are trying to play with YouTube's algorithm the best that we can because they hate. So that being said, let's talk about something that is really fun to talk about, and that's our current giveaway. This is the SCAR 20 chambered in 762 NATO, AccuTech bipod, big thick heavy boy up here. Thick, big boy. Yeah, that's thick with like three Qs. Yeah. And uh, this one right here is a five and a half power by 50 millimeter objective lens ACOG. So you got the tritium with the fiber optic running up here. This thing is fantastic, super clear. Yeah, do you, uh, do you think you can clear your house with this? Oh, totally. <laughs> Absolutely, I might damage my walls. Somewhere. Yeah, that'd be right. <laughs> might might be poking into a couple of doors. You also might be deaf. <laughs> I mean, yellow. Yeah, you know, yeah. you'd be all right. I can't be any more deaf than I already am. So. <laughs> there you go. I mean, actually, if you're quiet enough, can you hear it? <laughs> All right, we should make fun of that. <laughs> anyway, hey, we're going to leave it off there. Head on over to ClassicFirearms.com to get your entries in for the SCAR 20. Don't forget that the code word that you can enter in, or just the code, is DMR. That'll get you like 400 extra entries. And of course, you can refer your friends and family if you got them. So, uh, well, friends that is. Hope yeah. You, no, I mean, I feel like I might be touching on a sensitive subject about yeah. family. So anyway, <laughs> uh, we'll leave it off there. God bless you guys, and we'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com.